Hey everyone, this is Davide again from the Azure SQL PM team. So something I would like to discuss with you today is a topic that's very common when uh, talking with developers, and is the need of making sure that the API you create can securely access uh, data stored in the database in the, uh, in the backend. And of course, you normally would create uh, an, a middle tier uh, where your API runs that um, take care of all the authentication or the authorization issues, uh, uh, probably using uh, libraries like uh, OAuth 2 so that you can have a you know easier life and uh, you can avoid to write tons of code. But another option that you have, and it's an amazing option because it's actually uh, natively supported by Azure SQL, is just relying on something that we call row level security, which uh, honestly would have been better defined as policy-based security. And that's something that will help you to make sure that you reach the database and no matter what happens, if you run any query, that query will um, have a policy applied so that only the row that you can actually access to will be returned uh, by your select statement or will be affected by any other statement uh, you run. And this is completely transparent to you and also uh, to your application. So this means less code, just a cleaner uh, code base and more in general, uh, an easier approach to development. What I will going to show you in the next minutes is exactly that, how you can take advantage of row level security to simplify your code, create a beautiful API, this time in Python, to serve your data and just rely on native support uh, to role level security in Azure SQL so that you can just focus on other more important stuff that we cannot take care for you. Uh, but anything we can do for you, we are happy to do that. So let's, let's see it is in action. So let's start uh, taking a look at this uh, simple Python sample. It uses Flask and Flask RESTful and JWT. JWT is used to simulate the fact that at some point uh, the user has been uh, authenticated and authorized and the information about the user in specific uh, and specifically the user HID has been saved into the JWT token. The queryable class is used as a base class for these two classes that as you can see share exactly the same behavior and they are associated at two different uh, endpoints. Very simple API but just for the sake of the sample I kept everything simple. And the API itself doesn't do really a lot because the get method only calls the execute query JSON, which behind the scene just executes a store procedure. The store procedure name is calculated at runtime depending on which of the two endpoints has been called. So let's take a look at the API in action right now. What I can do here is just to run my application. And then here, just uh, uh, execute uh, an API request uh, using a better token I created before. And as you can see here now, all the data is returned, both for me and for someone else. Even though in the better token I have provided uh, in my authentication request, uh, what I'm actually sending is a uh, user HID that is related to my user. And in fact, if I go here and take a look at what is this user ID, you can see that the user ID is basically, let's say it's my user ID. I know that this is my number. So I should be able to only see sensitive data with ID equal to one because that uh, is the data I have access to, right? So I should be able to see only this. Instead of um, I also using data that belongs to John Doe, which is the market as data with ID2. So what we have been asked right now is to fix this problem and make sure that uh, no matter what, uh, if I provide my um, JWT token with my Ashed ID, I could only see my data. Now, how we can make this change? So the, uh, the beautiful uh, uh, solution would be not to have to change anything here. It would be nice if just by providing the user ID or in this case, the user HID, Azure SQL or the database behind could just uh, um, basically do the work for me, uh, making sure that uh, my store procedure will automatically return only the rows that that user has access to. Unfortunately, first of all, here uh, in the connection string, 
I cannot pass the user hash ID. In the best case, I can pass the username, but even if I would have had the username instead of the user hash ID, I wouldn't pass it. Because if I change the username, I'm basically destroying the ability of my application to use connection pooling. And connection pooling is actually needed to have a scalable and performance API. So we cannot really pass the username or anything else in the, in the connection string. We want the connection string to be always the same so that everyone can take advantage of the connection pooling. Luckily, Azure SQL uh, gives us the option to use something called row level security. That is exactly what we need because it will allow us with the minimum amount of code changes uh, to do exactly what we want. And actually, let me show you. The only change I need to add to my code is this. Make sure that before executing anything else, I set a session context, uh, specify in this case the user hash ID, the value that will be passed as parameter of this execution, and that's it. After that procedure has been executed, and please notice the read only equal to one, which means that the value set for user hash ID cannot be changed uh, during this session. So once it's set, is set once and for all. The only way to reset or to unset this value is to destroy and create a new connection. What this does? Well, basically, this informs uh, this inform Azure SQL and the row level security feature that I enable behind the scene that all the subsequent queries, all the subsequent execution should be done so that the user HD is taken into account. And we will see in a few minutes how we can use that information to filter out all the data that does not belong to the user making the call, in this case, myself, for example. But the main point here is that I just save. Uh, I just now, I just moved to Azure SQL to make sure that my security policy is on. I disabled before just uh, to show you behavior of my API. So let me enable it. And then we will come to this later, of course. But then what is this happens right now is that if I execute my query again, magic, oh man, look at that. Now it has recognized me and uh, it's correctly filtering only the rows that I can see. Now look and pay attention. I haven't changed my story procedure at all. My story procedure is still this one. So my story procedure is still absolutely, exactly, completely unaware of any additional security. I'm reading from a simple table. I'm just returning JSON. And even if I execute my query here, so let me bring this query down here. What will happen is that, oh man, nothing. Yeah, you know why? Because in that session, which is a different session than the connection that was used the, uh, from my API, in this session, I haven't set my execution context. In order to see anything here, I need to set my execution context. So let me do that also in this connection. And if I go here right now, I will be able to see some data. Now let me change the execution context. I can set a new execution context here because I specified read only equal to zero. So I'm allowed to change my execution context even without destroying and recreating my connection. And as you can see now, I'm only seeing data for John Doe. I'm pretty sure that you are amazed at this and you want to know more. So let's go and deep dive into what's happening behind the scene in Azure SQL. So what's happening behind the scene is that every time my sensitive data table is accessed, something called a security policy is applied. Now let's take a look at the how this policy has been defined. So the policy has been defined saying, uh, I want to add a filter predicate on the table dbo.sensitive data using the ID and all the values uh, therein as an input uh, to the function security predicate. That function is what uh, determines if I have access to that row with that specific ID or not. So that security, that function a secure called the security predicate is nothing more than another select. It simply is that simply check inside the sensitive data permission table if a user hid with the value 
that is taken from the session context, and that's why the session, session context is so important here, can have access to, the, to that row where the sensitive data ID is equal to the ID passed uh, in that function. So basically, just imagine that uh, for each function that returns from uh, the table sensitive data, so for e imagine, because that's not what's happening, obviously for performance reason, but from a logical perspective, we can think that for each row returned uh, from the DBO sensitive data table, that function is called, the uh, FN security predict function is called, and uh, the value passed as a parameter of security predicate function is the value of the ID column. For each value, the security predicate function runs a query that controls, that checks against the table um, sensitive data permission if a user has access to a row with that ID. And that is something that is done for us after um, the where clause is applied and before sending data to us. So this assures us that all the data that we should not see are completely removed from the result set and we will never receive it. In this way, we don't have to change uh, the story procedure or any query because uh, <clears throat> the policy applied to the sensitive data is done aside of the query itself. So we don't need to make the query dynamic, we don't need to move data back to the API and then filter there. It's completely transparent and it's amazing because I can keep my code completely clean both in SQL and in my uh, Python code in this case or C Sharp if I'm using C Sharp and by just enabling or disabling or changing the function or my security policy I can decide uh, who can see what while again keeping the code as simple as possible. This code is beautifully clean, it's lean, it's easy to read and the only thing I have to change is simply add this code to make sure and of course enable role of a security behind the scene to make sure that API are secure no matter what without compromising performance because I can still use my good old connection string. So just go take a look at role level security immediately if you need to develop a, a secure API. If you're not using Azure SQL, maybe this is the right time to start to evaluate it because as you can imagine, and especially if you are an experienced developer, you know how much code and how much work this role level security feature can just spare to you. So I hope you enjoyed this new feature and this video. I'm trying to get better at, at creating videos. Stay with me if you are interested. Subscribe my channel. And of course, look at the description. You will see a lot of links that will help you to understand better role level security, uh, a link to the GitHub repo. And just go and have fun with that because it's really an amazing feature. See you next time.